uh, devices for the cheap one for Ubi from Ubiquiti. This is a CPE called Nano G. Uh, you can find, you can see the OLT over here. Uh, the OLT is eight ports. It can handle uh, 128 uh, clients like this on each of the ports. Um, the 128 one over subscription. On the ports, you said it can do 128 clients per uh -huh. port. Yeah, what do you average seeing people use per port? 3264. Yeah. yeah, it really depends. Like it's not recommended to go up to the 128 because the splitting would be like too much and you would get you would get much shorter reach. Yeah. Uh, but let's say around 100 is perfectly okay and it's tested. So. Nice. So we've got the unit here, we've got the individual client units. How hard is it to deploy one of these client units? Well, it can be tricky to uh, design the distribution network because uh, you need to count with the attenuation of each of the parts. And, but yeah, the learning curve are steep at the beginning, but nothing you cannot handle. How about on the, just the configuration deployment side of these? How hard is it for somebody to pull one of these out of the box? Say the fiber's terminated, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. plugged in, everything's good to go. How hard is this guy to configure? What's the process well, like? Um, it's like plug and play, so there is really no difficulty. Yeah. Uh, you can find some articles on help.ubnt.com where it's explained how to design the bigger networks. But if you, will, if you want to connect it on, on your table, uh, then it's just plug it together and it works. I believe this is the only GPON platform which works like this. So it auto provisions? Uh, yeah. The yeah, little, then, yeah. So you don't actually have to log into the individual units, they auto provision basically. Yeah. The CPEs are provisioned from the OLT, there is something called, called ONU profiles. This is the first one. And if you, want, if you will have more of the OLTs or more products from Ubiquiti, uh, you can use the UNMS to uh, manage all of them from the single point. That's nice. So right now you guys are just making the active equipment, right? None of this passive yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the first devices for the passive optical networks. Uh, there will be more. Okay. So what's the next piece you're going to release for this? Is it going to be more clients? Is it going to be more Both. head ends? Both. Okay. <laughs> okay. And how about like muxes and things like this? Are you guys going to put uh, out any yeah, of that there stuff? Will be, there will be some accessories for sure. We are building the list and it will be available in a, in a couple of months. Right, right. It's coming. Really need that attenuation because you're not going di a yeah. far distance. It's just one uh, condensed population. So a 1 to 28 split, you would get about uh, 8 kilometers distance max because of the attenuation of the 1 to 128 split. Okay. So what's the head end? What's the head end device? The head end device is a C fiber OLT, and it has eight pond ports. So you could have 128 CPEs, which are nano G's uh, CPEs, connected to each pond port, and then that is split against 2.4 gig down and 1.2 gig up. So if it were as populated as you could make it, it would be about 18 meg down for each customer. So that's a 10 gig SFP. It is. Go into our 10 gig zone. What's the OLT worth? Worth? It's worth, it's priceless. <laughs> <laughs> the retail is $16.99. Okay. But it's worth $8,000. And what are, the C <laughs> what are the CDs? How much are they? They're $69 a piece. And then you also need to buy CDs over there? Uh, not for the CPs. You would only need a pond port, and those are $79. And it comes with one pond port, and then you can add more if you need it. And of course, we have like CPs going to whatever. We have our U5 or SFP Plus models. Hmm. Cool. Not yet. Um, but we have this air cube, the black box right here, and that air cube pairs well because it has POE output. So you mount that inside the building or inside the, the residence. They, the customer has access to that as yeah, so they can manage their Wi-Fi internally. And then you would have management to the, seat, uh, to the WAN side of it using our UNMS tool. So that way you can manage the air cube and see if it's out or if there's some type of value. And those are, let's start at $39, I believe, and the AC version is, I want to say, 59
When's the uh, when's the OL team available? It's available now. Is All it? of our distributors have. And the CPs are there? I'm sorry? The CPs as well? Same. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Any other questions? Good. Thank you. They do. Okay. Yep. So for our lab setup here, we have UCRM, uh, which is our management tool for client database. So we have different service levels. So this customer with the air keypad service level one, service level two, three, four, and they're all shaped to like 50 down, 50 down, 100 up, 100 down. So shaped in the router? That's shaped in the router. And that's all configured from UCRM. So you go to, you click to add a customer in UCRM, you assign them a service level. Okay. Then when you turn on QoS in UCRM, it connects to the edge router and configures the traffic shaping on the QoS. So just with, with a click, um, go in and manage it for you. And then uh, the OLT just is uh, the switch basically, or the access point, if you will, for all the CPUs going to it. Right. Okay. So. Nothing really automated for if you're not using ubiquity routers. Uh, that's not true. UCRM also does support third-party routers. Okay. So you could you could have anything here. Okay. Uh, handling that portion of the network, and UCRM can still integrate and enable QoS on those third-party routers. So when you say QoS, is it marking like DSCP code point? Or TOS or something? Um, there's a few different functionalities, so I don't know, honestly. Okay. Uh, for the, I was just for curious side, yeah. if it's marking and then allowing a third party, that's kind of the only universal ways if they're marking yeah. individual packets. Yeah, and uh, the UCRM developer down there, he gets a little more familiar with UCRM. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know if maybe it was like UCRM had an API on the back end that was making calls to something else, or are there you is an API, packets? but I don't know the inner workings of the, of the QoS with the third-party routers. But That's interesting. He developed it, so he, I'm sure he would uh, have a better answer. Yeah. It seems the cleanest approach. Yeah. Ish. Is you get, to do it? I mean, there's a lot of like. TOS, there's a lot of different code points you can put that can correspond to like different rate limits, I guess. Or, it'd be yeah. interesting. I'd be curious to dig more in and see how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And we're working on an optimized QoS feature for edge router uh, that handles the traffic a lot better, a lot more efficient.